Good evening, it is Matt Rogers. Now, with this topic of Planet X, I'm going to share some information about Dr. Robert Harrington. Does Planet X Nibiru exist? Is it Planet X of modern day astronomers are searching for? Is Zachariah Sitchin correct concerning ancient Sumerian astronomical knowledge? Here we have Dr. Robert Harrington, the astronomer in search of Planet X at the Black Birch Observatory in New Zealand. He was an American astronomer who worked for many years at the US Naval Observatory. He collaborated with astronomer James W. Christie that led to the 1970 of Pluto, the moon, Chardon. Eventually he worked his way into what is described in his work as an administrative role. Others have referred to him as the chief astronomer at the observatory or as an, a supervising astronomer. Regardless of Harrington's title, after the discovery of Charon, Harrington remained interested by the perturbations in the orbits of Neptune and Uranus. He was also considered the world-class expert in planetary motions. Breaking news reached out in the New York City Times and the Washington Post in 1983 indicated that an object as large as Jupiter, a massive planet or a brand of a star was pulling on Uranus and Neptune. The infrared astronomical satellite IRAS was reported had captured an image of the object. So clear was the evidence that one IRAS team member stated that all that is left is to name it. Actually, the idea for Planet X had first been proposed by Percival Lull. Clyde Toombar, the man who discovered Pluto, was searching based on Lull's observations. The search for Pluto was driven by the irregularities in the orbits of Uranus and Neptune for some decades after its discovery in 1930. No one was sure whether Pluto was resolved in the issue or not because Pluto's mass could not be determined that the discovery of Pluto's moon, Charon, in 1978. Pluto's mass could not be determined. It was far too small to account for the orbital disruptions of the gas giant planets. Then all of a sudden, oddly, what have should be heralded as one of the greatest astronomical discoveries in history went dark. There was one more mainstream news article appeared in the US News and the World Report on September 10, 1984, titled Planet X, Is It Really Out There? Then silence on the topic. Harrington was on the IRS team that made the discovery. He continued by involved in papers written on what was dubbed Planet X throughout the 1980s. He researched with Tom Van Fladden, an astronomer whose Wikipedia biography states had a career as a professional scientist but was noticed as an outspoken prominent of the mainstream views related to astronomy, physics and extraterrestrial life. Later he published a paper with P. Kenneth Sederman titled Planet X The Current Status 1987. In 1988 Harrington published a paper titled Location of Planet X. That was submitted the published in the Astronomical Journal. In that paper he calculated his best estimate based on observations of the visible bodies in the solar system on the location of the proposed Planet X. In 1990, Harrington met for a video recording interview with author and researcher Zachariah Sitchin. Television discovery, We Are Not Alone in the Universe. Segments of the two men conversing are pulling together in this video. Sitchin, having heard about Harrington's papers, sent him a copy of his book, The Twelve Planet. The two compared notes. It turns out that Harrington's estimations of the planet potential size and orbit matched quite closely with what Sitchin had gleaned from the ancient Sumerian writings. 
Here's where the story turns controversial. 28 months after his nationally televised interview, Dr. Harrington had died at the age of 50 of a fast-moving esophageal cancer. Many of the paranormal community have claimed for years that his death was mysterious, and some had even claimed a kind of remote foul play was involved. Some even claimed the interview with Sitchin condemned him because he was leading scientific credence of the existence of Nibiru. The question is, why would anybody want to kill a respected astronomer for talking with an author dismissed by the mainstream as a charlatan? If I may propose, the answer to this question is probably answered by the answer of this question. Why has the most important astronomical discovery of modern astronomy silenced by the mainstream media and science for over 35 years? The iris evidence was never reputed. Distinguished astronomers like Harrington continued to work on it for the next decade. How would his death serve anyone's interest. In addition to the fast-moving cancer, there are other irregularities surrounding his death and the discrediting of his work. Once he was no longer able to speak for himself, others spoke for him and his work was quickly dismissed. And here's how. Harrington's US Naval Observatory statement written by colleague Charles E. Worley contains the following statement. Considerations on the stability of the solar system led Bob to collaborate with T.C. Van Fladen in studies of the dynamic evolution of its satellites and to the eventual search for Planet X, conjectured to lie beyond Pluto and to be reasonable for small, unexplained residual of its orbits of Uranus and Neptune, late in his career, Bob seemed quite skeptical of such an object. Now this is becoming very strange because if you think about it, where did he write that or say that publicly? Where did he suddenly reverse course on more than 10 years of research into the topic of Planet X? We have only Worley's statement to collaborate this change of heart. You'll note that Worley died unexpectedly four years later at the age of 62. What of his work and claimed that the irregularities in the orbits of Uranus and Neptune caused him to conclude a very Pacific planet existed in the outer regions of the solar system, the belief that led him to share notes with Zachariah Sitchin on the national television just 28 months before the passing. Well, there's an interesting discrepancy about this too. Here is an explanation how his work was disproved. From the Wikipedia page, you'll note that there is and says that E. Miles Standish adjusted Neptune's mass six months before Harrington passing. This situation discredited the scientific ground of Harrington's claim that there was a Planet X. Wikipedia information as well, Harrington's version of Planet X disproved six months before he died. I mean, the information, again, that you're reading on the Wikipedia has been altered. So, indeed, why did they do this? Why are they changing the information time and time again? See, it is very sinister of the information that has been said, that has been written, and it's always swept under the carpet, hidden from the public. However, the mainstream media announced that the search for Planet X was dead came from Standish and was published in the New York Times in June 1993, six months after Harrington's passing, meaning not six months before Harrington's passing when he might have counted it, but six months after when he was no longer around to counter it. Convenient. The mystery of the body out in the solar system slipped back in the mist. There was a new science article published January 30th, 1993, a week after Harrington's passing, where Standish had made his results known within the scientific community, so Harrington was aware of these results. 
The Wikipedia page also states that Harrington had reversed course on Planet X later in his life. The source cited it. You guessed it. It is the USNO Orbitary written by Worley. So in the short, there is only hearsay to support the statement of Harrington's had changed his mind in the 28 months between talking to Sitchin and his passing. Plus the same New Science article quotes says the following about Harrington and quotes him. But the negative results do not deter Robert Harrington at the US Naval Observatory in Washington DC who has a long search for Planet X. It is true that if you put in the new mass of Neptune some of the key residuals in Uranus do decrease, he says. But in my opinion it is not correct to say that they disappear entirely. Harrington believes that Planet X lies in the southern sky, but his research came to a temporary end because he has not won the additional time. On the telescope in the southern hemisphere, to note and my note he was dying, there's certainly good reason to be looking, he says, but there's not good reason to be spending a great quantity of money on the search. He adds that he has always put the odds on Planet X existence at no better than 50-50. Is that the retraction they claimed he made later in his life? He says the government shouldn't invest a lot of money into it, but he was continuing his own research because he still believed it was there, only his search was cut short. In the years since, this idea that there is another large body out there in our solar system has become up again and again. Daniel Whitemere and John Matsey proposed Tai Chi. Now we see and have Planet Nine proposed by team leader by Mike Brown, who ironically was largely responsible for demoting of Pluto. The idea just won't go away, yet the mainstream media of science continue to make it the stuff of conspiracy theorists. So why? What's the danger in talking about the object or demonstrating its existence? That is the $64,000 question, isn't it? So indeed, what is truth? We may never know. What we do know is that one of the top astronomers in the world when he could speak out for himself was in general agreement with the ideas put forward by Zachariah Sitchin. We must demand the truth. We have the right for the truth and the right to speak out. Thank you for listening to this short broadcast explaining about Dr. Robert Harrington. God bless from Matt Rogers.